Sziasztok! Sok szeretettel köszöntünk melleteket itt a mai kérdezfelelek panelünkön. Egy olyan kérdést felteszek nektek előtte, hogy ki az, akinek esetleg van nehézsége az angol nyelvvel, hogy fordítsunk-e? Szeretnétek, hogy fordítsunk, vagy jó lesz az angol? Mert ha angolul beszélünk, akkor ugye több kérdés fog tudni elhangzani, hogyha fordítunk is, akkor kicsit kevesebb. Tegye fel a kezét az, aki szeretne fordítást. Nem, úgy látom, hogy... Jó, akkor, akkor angolul fogjuk teljesen megtartani. Ugye a három vendégünkből kettő van itt most velünk, a harmadik vendégünk pedig majd ezután a panel után fog következni. Az első cosplayesünk Hollandiából érkezett. Ő a gyerekkora óta mindig is rajzolt valamit, alkotott valamit, így neki ez a hobbi, a cosplay, ez nem állt messze, ugye, a, úgymond attól, amit csinálni szeretne. Úgyhogy az évek során ő már számtalan cosplayt készített, Olyannyira belemerült ebbe, hogy igazándiból könyveket is készített a cosplay készítésről, így aki mondjuk bele szeretne vágni a cosplay készítésbe, nem tudja hogyan, azoknak például ezek a könyvek nagyon nagy segítséget nyújtanak. Úgyhogy feljegyetek sok szeretettel, Precül cosplayt. Precül? Nagy-nagy tapsot kérnék szépen. A... Choose a seat. Choose a seat. A következő cosplayesünk pedig Ausztriából érkezett, aki szintén nagyon régóta készít cosplayeket, szintén nagy tapasztalattal rendelkezik, rengeteg rendezvényen járt már, sokat zsűrizett ő is versenyeket. Úgyhogy fogadjátok a színpadon nagy szeretettel Don Estebánt Ausztriából. Oké, okay, let's take a seat. So. You were judging the cosplay contest yesterday. And uh, let's talk a bit, talk a bit about the, your experience about the cosplay contest. Um, you, you were judging a lot of contests during your career and journey. Um, when you are looking at contestants, what are you looking for when you are judging them? Um, so back then, um, I was uh, like a normal cosplayer like everyone and I somehow managed to um, win one of the like bigger competitions in Europe and from that time on conventions started to write me um, if I want to judge as a judge in a cosplay contest so I didn't really know why but then I I saw that this is like a, a job that doesn't really exist there's no professionals who are uh, being uh, groomed to be cosplay judges so um, by the time being I uh, incorporated one thing into my crafting that every time I make a new costume I use at least one technique or one material um, that I haven't worked with sometimes it's not even the best that you can use for this particular particular uh, process, but at least I know what I do. Because I think um, the more techniques and the more materials I work with, the better I can get uh, at uh, judging others. Because, well, we owe it to them that we uh, know what we talk about. Okay, just give me a second. Can you hear us well? All right. I don't hear you well. Okay, sorry. We are asking the second stage to take down there so we can understand each other. <laughs> so yeah, so if you are judging the costumes in a costume contest, what's the most important thing you try to check when you look at a cosplayer who is in the contest? Um, well, uh, especially with contests that are about craftsmanship, it's really important that uh, the cosplayers have made their costume. So we try to ask questions that can tell us if they actually made it. So for example, if you ask, oh, what's the material that you made your bracer from? And they have to think about it then it's possible that it was maybe made by a friend. And of course that's okay for just having fun in cosplay, but when you're competing, it's really important that you make it yourself. And I also like to look 
very carefully at the different techniques that they used, and if they, um, yeah, if they used like the correct steps to make something look good, because for example, a foam armor, it can be very impressive from afar, but if you don't uh, use like uh, enough primer to prime the foam and then uh, paint it, then it just looks, it still looks like foam from up close. And when we get the time to talk with the contestants individually, we can see this and make notes about it. Um, yeah, there's something we often get. Um, after, a con after a contest, uh, people come to the stage and they're like, why did this guy not win? He made the biggest armor. It was so great on stage and everything. But like, we, we are the ones who spend like 15 minutes backstage checking every step that they made just to see like how the, pro uh, the progress was and the process of creating this armor. So um, sometimes it has to be trusted to us, even if the stage presentation is sometimes not the, the most amazing thing that blows you away, it's the costume that uh, has to be checked. How important is for you the stage presentation? Because we had a craftsmanship contest, so some cosplayers do a lot of work into the stage part of it. Some are like, yeah, it's a craftsmanship contest, so I go up and down. And But how important is to for you when you look at the contest? Um, it depends very much from contest to contest, because every contest has different rules. So, um, for example, uh, it's possible that a contest is 50% about craftsmanship and 50% about performance. And then you really have to like um, look at both. But if it's purely about craftsmanship, then the performance actually doesn't matter. But if you have two people that are just, you can't decide who's the best, and one of them has the best performance, then th this could be a deciding factor. But it really depends on, uh, on the rules of the contest. I'm, I'm personally uh, not that much of a performer. That's why I always prefer uh, craftsmanship uh, contests. And I think cosplayers know, nowadays know that when they make a costume for a competition, they try to figure out what competition to join in. Is it just 20% performance? Is it 50% performance? So you actually know what your, uh, uh, what are you good at and that's uh, the competition you choose. My next question will be a little bit difficult because um, the world is evolving and you see in the contest more and more the 3D printing and the embroidery machines and people or cosplayers always ask us if it's okay to bring like a 3D printed armor into the contest and um, it's a difficult thing to judge. So, because we like to say, okay, if you do the, mod the model files, for example, if you do the files yourself, it's like craftsmanship because it's not an easy thing. But every judge in the competitions is thinking differently about this. Um, for me also, I think uh, those uh, like expensive tools, because let's be honest, they're not cheap. Uh, not everyone has access to them. So, um, it's also not really fair to, to rank someone higher who uh, has the super clean costume because it's made with like uh, expensive machine. So sometimes you have to like really compare it, how, how they did it. But also with 3D printing, it's, um, it's possible to buy files online and then print it. Then it's still a lot of work to make it look good. But the designing it on the computer and like drawing the 3D shape, that's also a big part that we take into consideration that, that really counts towards the craftsmanship. So we could say that if you're looking at 3D printing, for example, it's like when you work with AVA foam, you have to make the patterns and, and it's 3D printing is the same thing. You have to make the patterns because if you're not making the patterns yourself, it's almost like downloading an EV foam pattern and just do the cuts and glue it, bring it together. Um, yeah, for me, it's, uh, it's a very interesting question because people tend to disagree on that, which I already do. That's um, why we <laughs> have this question. Because <laughs> um, I don't think that it's... Uh, uh, has to do something with money or accessibility because I personally think that everybody here has the possibility to have access to a 3D printer somehow. 
for example. It's a technology that over the last years uh, went into like every fourth household uh, so far. Um, and it's accessibly with memberships in crafting stores or you have other services to do that. And uh, 3D modeling, everyone can do that for free at, at home with a, a laptop PC, etc. So I don't think it's, uh, it's about accessibility. Like, of course, 15 years ago, when you only had the expensive uh, 15,000 euro CNC machines in factories, uh, of course, that's something different, uh, but that's what movie props were made from. Uh, but nowadays, um, I think it's something that uh, you don't have to be afraid if you take this stuff to conventions, uh, to competitions. I personally like to work with 3D printing uh, a lot. And uh, if someone knows a lot about 3D printing, they also know that there is a big difference between a 3D print or a very well post-processed 3D print. Um, for example, uh, 3D prints, um, if, you, if you work with PLA, like the plastic 3D print, and you work on, on low scale where you have, want to see a lot of details, it's very hard. You have to do a lot of priming, sanding, and uh, keep the structure in. Um, if you work with resin prints, for example, they are very fragile. Like everything you do with that breaks. So um, you have to choose the right uh, product to work with. You have to choose the right design, the right uh, way to post-process it. Um, you can also do like casts from 3D prints and cast them out of kind of flexible material. There's some stuff that I did, so uh, my resin prints would not break. Um, so there's actually a lot to it. Um, I personally prefer when it comes to armor stuff that's supposed to be really shiny. Um, I prefer the 3D prints or the casts because I kind of never manage to get my foam pieces as perfectly metal shiny as I want them to be. Only the weathered stuff. So when I was working on like Jedi armor or something like that, I really needed the 3D print because I needed the, the smoothest surface that is possible. Um, and when it comes to convention, of course, uh, creating the 3D model means a lot. Um, it's tough. Of course, not everybody is a 3D designer or uh, an artist when it comes to that. But uh, even the processes of slicing the 3D print, getting the print correctly. Like, you know, if you ever had a 3D printed sword or something and two pieces go together, like this little gap in between there. Like, if you make that perfectly even so that nobody can see that there's two pieces connected, for example, that's already a good job. And that's stuff that we're looking for um, when we charge a competition in the back. Thank you. So um, I want to ask a few things about you guys because, okay, that is the contest. Uh, what kind of materials do you work, uh, work with? Or which materials do you like the most? Because you have two different styles, I think. And it would be interesting to hear more about yourself. So let's start with the materials you really like to work with. Um, I personally, oh, it's a little bit hard. <laughs> um, I like to work with uh, EVA foam. It's, um, yeah, it's pretty nice to work with. <laughs> and also uh, war blast. But I also really like to work with fabrics. So also to make um, interesting textures. And yeah, I like sewing as well. So. Um, my friends at cosplay. Hello, hello, hello. Oh yeah, I'm back. <laughs> Sorry, I think that was the cosplay shop cutting me off before I can say that I don't really like working with foam that much. I work with it. I used to work a lot with it, <clears throat> but I like clean stuff. I want it as clean as possible. I want it to be shiny. I don't know if anybody saw me yesterday with my. Peacemaker helmet uh, was the, the wandering makeup mirror for some people. Um, but you can only get that with a really smooth surface. It's something that you have in many industries, like in the car industry, when you have the same materials as resin uh, or what is it called, fiberglass, something like that, where you need uh, the reinforced material to be strong and very sturdy and stiff so you can get the good paints on it. And that's what I really love to work with. Um, I recently started with a project from Elden Ring where I have uh, an armor <coughs> with uh, very, very small details on it. So I started to print it in, in resin print. And that's one thing that I mentioned before. It's something that uh, breaks on stage or anything. So it's not uh, 
usable for for uh, con contest cosplay. So I started to work with uh, making molds of it and casting it from rubber. So it basically have the same thing that I 3D printed, but now I have it in rubber and it's comfortable to wear and you can drop it on the floor. Um, and that's actually stuff that I really like to work with because you have really have the same uh, surface. It's a very smooth surface. You can give it the shiniest finish ever and without ever worrying that uh, in the sun or when you move it too much that uh, the foam breaks off the, the paint, for example. So that means that you are doing a lot of sanding and priming and... Yes. That's your life. You, you, I live in a flat uh, in Vienna, so you should see my bathtub when I finished with uh, 3D print. Oh, you are doing it in the, in the bathroom? I do it in the bathtub, yeah, and it looks right. horrible. So that, <laughs> okay, I have a garden, so I could not imagine doing it in a flat. Yeah, and especially I, I, people who work with foam, please tell me, what, how do you deal with all the foam flying around when you work with uh, the Dremel? I get a vacuum cleaner and I put the hose like between my legs so it's right here and then I'm sanding above and it sucks the most of the particles and then I can keep using the vacuum cleaner to clean everything it's perfect I don't want to uh, flush the, the plastic through the yeah drain <laughs> so I am the third kind of person I am doing the sanding. I have a cat. The cat just goes into the sand and carries all, not out, but all around the house. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, let's talk about a, a bit about your style. What kind of costumes do you like to make? So what's your style? I think my style is like the complete opposite from uh, Don Esteban, because I really love like nature themes and textures and horns and just fantasy stuff. And I don't like the super smooth, sh shiny surfaces on my costumes. <laughs> so we got the two opposites here. It's uh, definitely the opposite. <laughs> but that, that's a good thing for the contest. You are covering a lot of field, a lot of styles. Um, for me, I don't really think I have a style. Somebody told me I just cosplay the, the, the bad characters in some part. But What's a style? The bad guy style? It's a bad guy style, no. It's not a bad guy. We, well, I guess you can play him as a bad guy. But usually it's uh, when I, I play a game, I watch an anime, I watch a movie or something. It's like when a character pops on screen and I'm like, this guy or this impresses me it's like whoa and then it, you know you feel like a little connection to the character or to the to the scene or to the the costume somehow and that's when I decide uh, if I want to do something or not but uh, apparently it seems that I have a style or something <laughs> okay so another interesting topic is because we have a lot of cosplayers a lot of cosplayers want to do Cosplay, maybe not as a career, but like getting someone who is a well-known person. So how did it change for you? Because you started as a cosplayer and at some point it changed. Well, uh, for me actually, um, I didn't plan to be a full-time cosplayer. I, um, I'm actually an uh, ecologist, so forest nature. And when uh, my job ended at the, the last financial crisis, <laughs> Yeah, um, I uh, tried to do something with my art, so I made fleece hats with ears, and I started to sell them at conventions, and it went really well, so I kept doing that, and at the time there were no jobs to be found, so it was kind of the only solution. So just, just for the people who are sitting there, so when you are going to a convention, you are selling patterns, like you have books, because you started to make books for the cosplayers, you have patterns, but you are selling finished products too? Yeah, that's what I started with. So I sew hats with uh, ears and I also make hoodies with, with tails and, and uh, wings, so dragon hoodies. I still have them in my shop, but it's more as like a memory uh, to still remember how it started because I kept, uh, like, so I started with making the hats and the hoodies and selling them. Then I also made costumes and people started asking me how I made the costume. So I started making tutorials. Um, then they wanted to get my patterns. So I made patterns and started selling them. Um, then, uh, yeah, 
that, like it, it got more and more. At a point, I started writing books about cosplay. Um, the hats and the hoodies are just more, yeah, more of a memory, but they're still there. And now it's it's cosplay patterns and tutorials uh, full time, and I'm I'm really grateful that, that that's possible. And it's really helping people to start with their cosplays. Um, over the years, I've been meeting um, many people who live off cosplay, like uh, Pretzel, for example, and uh, I admire them. I love what they do for the community. I love uh, their communities that they're building. And uh, a few years ago, I myself was, let's say, at a crossroads uh, decision where I was, you know, you get uh, calls from publishers for some corporations or do advertisements for someone, something, and it's like, it's a bit of pressure that you feel there, and then you see like, okay, it's, it would be becoming like work somehow. So I started to talk to some friends in the community, like uh, Ben, for example, I think everybody knows Mall Cosplay, and to get the, the feeling of how, how, this, how this works for him. And after some talks, uh, I made the decision for myself that I don't want to enter this as a professional and make this uh, for a living, to keep it as a hobby. Uh, doesn't mean you can't be a professional cosplay judge when it comes to that, but uh, for me, I think if I would make a living off it, it would change the way I see it. Um, like, I, 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 I'm just afraid that I might lose the interest or the fun, the joy that I have right Basically, now. Basically, there are deadlines and sometimes there's a demand for special characters that's already trendy yeah. or trending or something new and you have to make that and not what you like to do. Yeah, Basically. and, and it's, a, it's a tough job. It's really tough. You just see, yeah, you saw the line of Tarin, for example. It is tough. He, this guy didn't have a lunch break for some time because he just he wanted to talk with everyone, for example. It's, it's how he is. It's, it's great. But uh, I'm happy that I chose a kind of like a different part and work in marketing now. <laughs> um, you were actually traveling. You both were traveling probably a lot as cosplay guests already or visited many conventions or multiple countries. Is there a country or convention that you especially liked or maybe a cosplay contest that was special that you really liked? It's um, I, I mentioned it yesterday. I, I really like the Hungarian community. It's, it's not something I would say everywhere. I really, <laughs> I really like you guys. Um, uh, but the craziest thing I've been to is the Baltics. Like, how many contestants did we have yesterday? Like yesterday? 18? 18 something? Um, you mean how many contests we had here? No, no, the contestants yesterday oh, contestants, for the, the yes, craftsmanship. 18. But I know what you will talk about yeah. because I was there yeah. in um, Latvia. Yeah. It was, I have to imagine, like, 18 people in the backstage judging. We took like one hour and a half, maybe, or something like that. It's great. But when you go to Latvia or some other Baltics country, they have a different mindset when it comes to them. They're like, I buy a new costume or I make a new costume, I have to present it on stage. So there's like over 100 people each day entering the cosplay competition. So you're backstage like forever. So we end, we're, coming, we're coming up with the question when people enter the judging room like, did you buy your costume? Do you even want to be here? No, I just want to be on stage. Okay, thank you. So we just can't get more time into it because it was like every one of those per people had they had five minutes time slot just to just to talk with us. <laughs> yeah, but I know what you're talking about. I was there as a judge once, but I didn't know the number of the contestants. That was a surprise. I got there and we were sitting there. Okay, we start the judging. And so how many contestants? 80 today, 100 tomorrow. <laughs> Yep. Because actually, we also like to go around and see stuff. So yeah, it's not possible if you're in the Baltics as a cosplay judge. Yes. Do you have any big cosplay plans or a special costume you want to, you didn't do yet, but you really want to do? Well, um, I told you that I started selling my hats at convention, right? That's when I made my Facebook page, Pretzel, and Instagram. And that was in October um, 2014. So that means this October, Pretzel is existing for 10 years. And I'm 10 year anniversary. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm kind of
kind of feeling the pressure, pressure to have to make something very epic <laughs> to celebrate. But I think I want to make something that really um, shows my style over the years and uh, the things that I really like and make a combination of that. So something with maybe antlers or horns and uh, some armor uh, pieces with, with a lot of details. And probably the color scheme will be um, a lot of green. <laughs> but I, uh, I think that will be fun. So October, it should be ready. <laughs> We are waiting for it, looking forward to it. Um, when you got into cosplay, like how did it even start with cosplay for you? What was the first cosplay you saw, or how did you think about cosplaying first? <coughs> when I was a student, I moved to a new flat with uh, two girls living there, and I was, I was just a nerd. And uh, I was having that's my... That's, sorry, that's obvious who started, guys. Oh, I went with my female friends and suddenly I am into cosplay. No, I, I didn't even know them. Okay. I, I just I'm a student, you just take the cheapest flat that's somewhere and then you move in with people who you don't know and you tend to hate after a few years usually. But I actually still like them. Um, and I was just, as I said, a nerd crafting with lightsabers and putting them on the walls and stuff like that. And then... They approached me one evening and they said, like, you're a cosplayer too. I was like, whoa, whoa, what? No idea what it is. And so they introduced me into that and they said, yeah, we're going to a convention in two weeks. You have to come. It's like, what's your favorite anime that you're watching right now? And it's like, fairy tale, for example. It was like a few years ago. And then uh, they said, yeah, we're going to, what character? And then we make the costume with you. And then, yeah, that's how I got kind of like bullied into <laughs> the cosplay community by two girls. But it was amazing. It was lovely. And if anyone's interested, it was Laxus from Fairy Tale, if anyone knows the anime. For me, it was a little bit different how it started. Um, when I started making costumes, I never heard the word cosplay. But I just, actually, yeah, there is the Lord of the Rings boot, right? Um, I wanted to be an elf. So I made the r nice long dresses and of course I wanted to be an elf. You're, you're like, of course. Because all, all girls <laughs> want to be a princess or an elf first. I, 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 I wanted to be an elf first too. I, w I wanted to be a dwarf, that's why I grew a beard. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so that's how it kind of started with making the, the costumes. And in the Netherlands, we have uh, each year uh, a fantasy festival that's uh, outside, like around castle gardens. And I started in yeah 2002. And then I made a new yeah, costume. It was super simple back then, like just a simple elf dress. <laughs> uh, every year, one every year. And in 2010, I think, I found out that cosplay existed. And I made my first cosplay, which was the evil queen from Snow White and the Huntsman. And I made the crown with cardboard from like a box that, that flowers from the plant store came in. And I still have the, the crown. Nice. Actually, I just realized I cut you off because I asked the, about the future big costu costume plan and I left you out. Do you even care? Anyone interested? Yes, we care. Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> yes. That's why I'm sitting here. No, I um, actually, just a story. This guy back there, the, the Witcher, it was, back then it was like my dream cosplay, but then I, I saw Ben doing it and like, oh, it's so great, I will never do it, it's amazing. But then I actually, uh, by coincidence, I had to meet him, I saw his cosplay and I talked with him. And after that, I was like, okay, it's just a guy, it's just a costume, I can do the same, I can do it better, I said to me. Uh, and then uh, I actually started the project, so it was actually a very big motivation, motivation meeting the the guy and this is what was back then one of my most ambitious costumes. I'm very happy that I uh, won the Euro cosplay contest with that a few years ago. Um, and until then, <laughs> thank you. Uh, until then, I usually made like kind of smaller projects that rather fit in my, my flat. Um, but recently I started with uh, ambitious cosplay again. It's from Elden Ring. I don't know if anyone knows Godfrey. It's a big character. Oh yeah, a few, a few Elden Ring players. He has a big lion on the head, it's, uh, on the shoulder sitting. It's a 
crazy project where, where I already ran out of space uh, because I tried to fit the eggs uh, in my living room and it didn't work. So um, it's, it's, it's kind of coming along, but it's, it's buried in, in, in somewhere in the flat. So I need to find like a workspace so I can actually finish this cosplay in the next uh, maybe one or two years. I would be lovely to. Um, how many costumes do you make in a year? Well, actually, um, now not as much anymore as when I started my Patreon, because then I thought it was the way that you have to finish a costume every month and then make rewards from it. And it was exhausting. That those years were really way too stressful and I shouldn't have done it. And now, last year, I made uh, four costumes, but um, one big one and the other three were for my book that I wrote. So, uh, and those are, those are more, uh, more simple. But still, it was enough. I was busy all the time. At the end of the year, I looked at it and I thought, I only made four costumes. Um, I should have made 12. And that felt really stupid. But actually, it, it's OK. I mean, I made many tutorials of it. I made um, a lot of videos. And I could help so many people with the patterns of those cosplays that I made that it's, it's absolutely more than enough. So don't be fooled and don't think that you have to make a new costume for every convention or even every month, which is absolutely totally bollocks. Just do it at your own pace. And the most important thing is that you keep enjoying it. Because believe me, there was a point I didn't like it anymore. And now I, I like it again. So. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's for everyone that you can think back at the good old times where you still had more time. That was the time when you were able to like finish a costume every month. When, when, when you were at school and you had a summer break. Yes, of course, so that, or you yeah, We are all crying about the summer break, but we don't have it anymore. Yeah, or you're a student and you don't give a shit about anything, so you can just make costumes instead of going to class, for example. So, <laughs> um, it's like, yeah, cosplay a month was totally possible back then, but now uh, it's like, it's like you yeah, have maybe three a year if it, if it comes up, because, um, if you have a, a busy life, stressful life, I mean, even you, you said you, you even, it's, it's your work you do with cosplay, but you don't have time to even make costumes. Uh, it's the same when you, when you work a job, and that you, uh, sometimes you're too tired in the evening to work on costumes. So you, uh, what I started with, I really block my weekends or I take the days where I have more free time just to hyper-focus on doing the costumes, for example. So I really like, take three or four days and get as much done as possible uh, and so it can still be enjoyable and what you mentioned uh, due to the things that before you get frustrated with a costume it happens it happens to everyone at some point just take the costume put it in a corner for quite some time you will come back with new thoughts refreshed energy and then you can take it back never work on a costume when you are frustrated on it just because there's a deadline or something deadline can be pushed for example so don't worry about it never use the joy in what you're doing that's really important um, in the last five minutes, I, have, I can have some more questions, but I would like to give the chance to the people here, because we have five minutes left. If there is anything you want to ask, I will um, ask here someone if we have, oh no. I will, I will just go, come here. And if someone wants to ask questions, then we can do it here. I have another question, and it's going to be sound like awfully like a job uh, in interview. How do you see yourself as a cosplayer in like five or ten years? What is your plan? How do you, um, I don't know, think about like you said you don't want to uh, take it as a profession, uh, to, to not to burn out, but like what is your plan for the future future um, first of all I'll be very happy in 10 years because usually the characters I make are very like older people so I don't have to dye my beard anymore or draw wrinkles on my face 
Um, so that I got that going for me then. Um, but yeah, I still want to do the same thing that I do right now. Um, just keep working in my company and uh, keep cosplay uh, as a hobby and still have it in my life. I have it incorporated on, on, on many levels. Uh, we recently started a project in, in Austria where we bring cosplay to school. For example, it's a, it's a pretty cool project. It's like you have those 10 to 15 years old and you incorporate the crafting into the school process. It's something like uh, I really like to do, like bring the, the cosplay community to to New Horizons, um, but I will still decide to not make it uh, uh, my daily job. Uh, I hope for the future that I can keep making uh, like tutorials and patterns to help other people with cosplay. And in 10 years, I hope I will have a family and that I can inspire my children to also be creative and use their imagination um, maybe cosplay together, you know? Uh, hi, my question is about uh, judging and jurying that stuff. So I know, you know, there are usually multiple juries and you each give a rating, I suppose. Do you talk it over with the other judges or do you just give each other one and you don't talk about it? Like, do you discuss the ratings? Uh, it's a very good question because uh, many people probably don't know what's going on behind doors. Um, there is, let's say, there's multiple types of contests. There is some contests where you get a, a, a judging sheet where it says like accuracy, detail, materials loose, etc. And you as a judge, you give points to every section. You hand that paper over to the organizers and you as a judge have no idea what happens afterwards, which actually I, I, I don't like. I think you don't like it either that much. yeah, Because uh, people have different ways of judging uh, with points and especially the first person that starts uh, sets the bar and that's always very difficult. So we actually prefer like talking it over um, afterwards. Uh, takes more time of course, but uh, you find uh, like all the different opinions go into very well and opens new thoughts for everyone. And I think that's the better way to reach the decision. And it's, uh, so as far as I've been a judge, it's for like 80% 80, 80 of the contests do it like that, that you have a, a chance to discuss the winners as a judge. Yeah, for me, uh, for me the same. Um, I, I like when you, indeed, you can make your notes because it's true, with the first contestant, you have no idea what the rest will bring. So it's really hard to, to give points because you don't know what to compare it with yet. So uh, making notes about everyone and then later, uh, talking with each other uh, about oh that was really good about this one and oh, I li really love the techniques that they used and oh this one was absolutely amazing on stage and then together you can make a decision it's not it's not easy but I think it's it's a good way yeah I, I think we have a we have time for a last question a last question if someone wants to okay here is the last question Hi, uh, so I wanted to ask you guys about the costume that you're wearing right now. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're wearing right now? Um, I love cyberpunk. <laughs> it's, uh, I've been like, you know, playing the, the what's it called, not done the pen and paper. You know, everyone knows the Dungeons and Dragons, but actually uh, cyberpunk was a, a pen and paper way before, not way before, but for a very long time too. I've been playing that and I was so happy when the game came out and when I first saw the designs I was like I fucking love this especially since it's a it's a customizable character I can make I can use my own face I can just go with my hair whatever it pleases like uh, so it's very comfortable to wear and it's a very ambitious project that I made uh, together with uh, four friends because three friends and plus one we wanted to have all the same jackets for example so it was a very fun project to work with because we could separate the steps uh, on the jackets for each of us so we kind of had like a streamlined work and then in the end we had three jackets of the same uh, size uh, 
for me, I'm wearing an uh, original design uh, Viking fantasy inspired uh, costume, but um, it just combines a lot of things that I like. Just fantasy and nature colors and um, folklore um, and uh, looking badass like a warrior. <laughs> so yeah, and also I, I love your costume. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. And I think we can say the goodbye to the people here. And um, yeah, because yes, your, our time is up. Thank you so much for being with us here today. And uh, yeah, they can still meet you at the VIP meet and greet later. So and, and thank you very much. Top shot, Kering Saver, and Wendy Gangfeld. Thank you. Mi pedig nem sokára folytatjuk a harmadik vendégünkkel.